Um, I've kind of cleared up the past, but that's great. You know, that Tottenham goal as well. Hey, hey, what an edda. <laughs> <laughs> Why the book now? 20 years sober. What, what is it for you? Is it for other people? It's passing on the message. It's for other people, really. Mm. You know, all the royalties, uh, all my royalties are going to the charity, my charity that I set up, Sporting Chance Charity. Uh, it's passing on the message in this dysfunctional, crazy world of professional football. I don't know another person that stayed sober for 20 years. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. I've just written my story uh, of the last 20 years, how I've stayed sober in this world, in this mad world. What, what, Tony, is there, a, is there a point now, as you think back, at the turning point moment? Because people are always fascinated by it. Mm. You, you talked a lot about how deep you were in it. I mean, yeah. you were in a lot of trouble. Was there a moment that you can just pinpoint where you thought, Do you know what, I, re I'm, I am going to change, and you knew that was something you had in you? Yeah, I, I started to cry and I, I surrendered, you know. It's my rock bottom and... Uh, uh, it was the end. It's why it's important that I put my bottom in again to sober the new book. I did eight, in 88, uh, 98. I did Addicted, and it was very raw and it was all the all the mess. And that was like a clean up process. Um, that book. This one's a little bit more therapeutic, a bit more meat in it, a bit more insightful. Um, but it's still important to remember that turning point, as you said, you know, and that bottom. Did it really get that bad, you know? Did I go to prison? Did I wet myself? Did I, you know, it was a bit too early to talk about these things. <laughs> no, I think, but, but, you know, in a way, it's it, kind, it did kind of get that bad. what you're addressing before is that it doesn't get taught openly enough. Yeah. And, and there'll be people now, and I don't know what your thoughts are on whether people get enough help. And I know that's something mm. very much you're involved in now in terms of getting yeah. people to talk more openly. I think it's a very British thing, and, and men in particular, we don't like. Admitting, we see it as a weakness, maybe, to ask for help, you know, and it's it's so important to open, it's been so important for me to open my mouth and ask for help. And, you know, my favourite words, are, you know, before I stopped drinking was, I know, I know everything, you know what I mean? I know, I know. But now it's really refreshing and great to say, oh, actually, I don't know that. I don't how, know how that works. How easy is it, you, you say difficult for men, how easy is it in quite a high testosterone environment, such mm. as a football team or any any sporting team, to admit that you're weak when you're expected it's or you're, weak, su or you're suffering you're from an illness. Real. Okay, you're <laughs> suffering from an illness um, when you're expected to be strong, powerful, in control, ready for Well, you're strong, powerful and in control by admitting your weaknesses, you know, and opening your mouth and saying, look, I can't handle this, you know, that's a strength. You know, we, I think in the past we do get carried away with things and we think we've got to be tough, we've got to carry this stuff around, you know, I can cope, I can cope with loss and grief uh, and and get on with it, you know, stiff up a lip type of thing, you know. It, it's not, it's been my reverse experience, actually. The more I've opened up, the more people, the more times I've told people that I'm full of self-doubt, you know, I don't feel particularly good today. You know, it, it, the freedom with that is, is enormous. And it's just like my rock bottom when I surrendered and when I just went, I can't do this. I didn't want to drink, but I'm still getting drunk. It's the most scary place I've ever been in, you know. It's really confusing. So